Uh, you know, prayers like that are, are very personal because the family of God is very personal. And so we are supporting uh, uh, Brother Richard with our prayers and Amen. just letting him know we care. And uh, there's no easy way to handle that. The Bible tells us that God's grace is sufficient. And he'll give us the grace that we need for this day. Can you say amen? amen? So welcome, everybody. Welcome those of you watching us on Facebook Live. Welcome everybody who's here this morning. We're glad that you're here. A couple of things if I could share with you before we uh, uh, get into my message this morning. We're, we're, we're glad that God is doing things, and he's doing things. It's, it seems like you may not realize, but the Lord does things behind the scenes. Okay, he doesn't always do things right out in front. And this week was an awesome week. I really, really, really hope, come on, I really hope you enjoyed it. For those of you that were able to get on to the uh, LeaderCon, the conference this week, I think it was a blessing for you. If you weren't, you came here in the evenings that we were here. Uh, there was incredible messages that were, uh, that were spoke. They, they more than likely will have them where you can... Uh, where you can watch them again and you can uh, see them if you missed a lot of them or most of them. I, I'm not, we haven't got the information yet, but they'll be fixing that up. I think the last, maybe the last day um, into Saturday, they finally had gotten on Facebook because I think communion was even on Facebook. So uh, working things out is, is always uh, needs a little bit of time. How many know that? Needs a little bit of time. So uh, as soon as, if you did miss any of those, uh, they will be uh, putting them up there. I want to say thank you to those of you that, that, were, uh, that were with us in South Almani on Friday night. I appreciate you coming. And I just want to let you know that that was an incredible blessing for Pastor John and Sister Gloria and his church. Um, we, don't, we don't connect often. We, we, we try to send out invites and you know that everybody's occupied doing other certain things, and every, every ministry is really busy. But our connection is very important. And staying connected is what keeps people alive. And so we're trying to do that. Friday night was, was an incredible challenge that the Lord put on my heart to minister to them. And uh, for those of you that were there, I just want to say thank you because it represents our love for our sister church there in South Almani. And uh, God's, gonna, God's starting to do some awesome things there. You heard Pastor John share with you that uh, they're in the process now um, of actually uh, uh, not just being renters, but actually owning the property and purchasing the property. So that's... Woo! God gave them some awesome favor through the organization that owned that uh, uh, property, and I think that's an incredible blessing. So thank you. Amen. Saturday morning communion was awesome. I appreciate those of you that got up early. That was early for a lot of folks. It was. Seven o'clock was early for a lot of folks. Not, not, not everybody, but it was early. And it, you know what? It was an awesome blessing. It was an awesome blessing. I have uh, had the privilege of, of, of hearing uh, Rudy Van Dierman preach since, uh, well, I think I was in my early 20s, and I think he probably was in his uh, mid-20s or so. And his message on friendship was off the chart. I, I almost wanted to preach on friendship. I said, I'm going to take that message and minister to it. So I am, because I, I got a lot of things on my heart that, that I just kind of jotted some notes down. But um, it's been a good week. Amen. And I hope it's been a blessed week for you. And, and I know things like this, life, life still happens. Life still happens, and we still covet your prayers, and we still are glad that God is doing things. So we're, we're here. Uh, hope, hopefully, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I think we'll be uh, working, at, working back ourselves back inside. We're going to keep all the things together that we need to keep together, but I think it'll be a blessing. I know that was a crowd on Friday night. The distant thing kind of flew out the window after a while <laughs> of trying to keep six feet. But those of you that were, that were kind of family and close, it worked out really well, and it was a blessing for them. And, and uh, it's always a blessing for me because I like old school. And that worship was some old school, man. That was, them are songs I close my eyes and know all the words. <laughs> right? So those of you on Facebook, welcome this week. If you did get a chance, I think it was a blessing for you. I hope it really was. I'm looking forward to the next thing that God does as we work our way through the, the, the finishing of this uh, COVID season. Can the church say amen? I hope you're with us on that because that's what I'm praying for. 
That's my prayer, and that's what I'm praying for. So, listen, as we, as we do on a regular basis, don't forget the things that are going on during the week. We have our Monday night classes and our book reading on Monday night. We start at 6 for a prayer meeting, and then we start at 7 in our book reading. If you haven't, in the last couple of weeks, you kind of lag behind, catch up. Turn to your neighbor and say, catch up. Now, I don't mean catch up and mustard. I mean, I mean, catch up. For those of you men, I, I, I have been recommending that you read the book slow, so I hope you have been, so that you don't just breeze through it. There is so much in it. As a man thinketh, so is he. And so this has been a, this has been a great blessing for us. It's also been challenging. I hope it's been a challenge for you. And all these things are, are coming, coming to, to place because God's taking us somewhere. So Monday nights, Wednesday nights, we're still here. We have service, God's word being ministered to us. The, the ministry on Friday nights, some in different locations, some with different systems, whether it's house party, whether it's, uh, um, I was going to say Amazon, it's not Amazon, Zoom, 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 no matter what it is, get involved, right? Because, because this season is proving that God's people have to make make a decision to get involved. It, there, you, you can't lag behind in this season. It's requ- you have to do something about it. You got to get up. You got to make a connection. You got to call somebody. You got to do that kind of thing. And I think it's a real proving ground for those of us who uh, who get used to things being the same way. Right? We get used to things same way all the time, over and over. So get involved in this, and if we can help you in any way, let us know. Connect with us, and it'll be a blessing for us. Amen. Let, let's get ready to give to the Lord and honor the Lord this morning. Come on, would you do that with me? Man, if I could, Brother Ed, could you grab me one of those envelopes? I was going to do it, and, and then the worship just kind of got me. Um, it just did. You have to bring me a pen, too, my brother. I don't have a pen either. So uh, let's stand to our feet, can we? Thank you very much. Whoa. God is a good God. Jesus said these words in the book of John, chapter number 15. He said, I am the vine. I am the true vine. Say true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch, say every branch. Every branch in me. That does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He prunes it. That's not the fruit. That's clipping the little wild things that grow. How many know about doing stuff like that? I have. Let me finish it before I get lose my train of thought. He prunes it so that it might bear more fruit. I have giant elephant ear in front of my house. They're the big ones, you know, the ones that the ears get really huge. But because of my lack of understanding, I started letting all these little elephant ear plants grow around it. And you will not believe, I, should, I wish I could show you the picture. The, the big plant with the stalk that's that big that had huge elephant ears has shriveled up to almost nothing. And it did that because I allowed all those little plants to grow that sapped away all the nourishment for the big one. And I don't get those big elephant ear beautiful uh, leaves that grow or whatever it is. They're not happening anymore because all those other things are sucking the nutrients dry because they're attached to the same root. And so the other day I was out doing some yard work uh, and actually my wife was walking around and I started tearing. She goes, what are you doing? Those are pretty. I said, they're the small ones and they're suckers. (laughs) She goes, what? I said, they're suckers. She goes, oh, I remember that sermon. (laughs) I said, they're draining. They're draining the one that gives the big the big plant. They're draining it away. When we, when we lose our connection with the Lord, when we, when, we don't, when we don't have him first anymore, we find ourselves in trouble. We find ourselves in the absence of blessing, in the absence of fruitfulness, and f- we find ourselves lacking 
and wanting and being in want can be a very ugly, desperate thing. You know how it is when you want something really bad and you can't have it. Ask a kid. Ask a kid, ask a young child that hears the ice cream truck coming down the street and they want an ice cream and they open the door and they're standing at the door looking around and you're telling them no and they want to open the door and go out and you're telling them no. That's what happens to us. But we're grown-ups. So I want to challenge you this morning. Don't let, don't let that lack destroy the fruitfulness that God has blessed you with in your life. Let's give and let's do that. Would you bow your heads all across the building here? And if I can, I'm going to ask, uh, let me see, a, st a strong voice, way, way, I like pe picking people way in there. Brother Steve Zuniga, way in the back there, man. That way the folks in the back, they don't hear us mumble up here in front. Would you pray over this offering and this we give to the Lord this morning? Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, you can be seated. You can be seated. You can head on over to that table right there. Brother Ed, could you please come and do this for me? All right. Those of you on Facebook, we also want to welcome you to do all that you can to help us in this ministry and give. It is a, an incredible blessing. And in God's goodness, he outdoes us. He outdoes us, man. If you know and you've been a giver over the years or maybe over the weeks or over the months, whatever it's been, if you know anything, you realize that God always outdoes us. Yes, he does. Always. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to ask you to turn with me to the Old Testament. I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua, if you can. I'm titling uh, what's on my heart. I'm going to do something a little different. I don't have any points to make really this morning. And I've asked some people. I'm going to challenge some people to help us in prayer uh, in a few moments. In, in the Latin term for fathers, it's padre or dads. But when you talk about parents, you use the plural, the plural word, which is padres. We say, una padre for a dad or a father, madres for a mom. But when you speak about them together, you say padres. It's the plural form. And I've titled this message this morning, Fathers or Parents Have a Choice. They have a choice. Let me, uh, let me read a quote that I have to you, and then we'll read Joshua chapter 5, starting at verse number 1. Everything you do is based on the choices that you make. It's not your parents, your past relationships, your job, the economy, the weather, an argument, or your age that is to blame. You and only you are responsible for every decision and choice that you make, period. That's a pretty heavy quote, huh? The reason we think it's heavy is because it's so true. Amen. It's so true. Fathers have a choice. Parents have a choice. Joshua chapter 5, starting with verse 1. Now it came about when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea, they heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the sons of Israel and until they had crossed, that their hearts melted. And there was no spirit in them any longer because the sons of Israel at that time, excuse me, because of the sons of Israel. Now, at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make for yourselves flint knives and circumcise again the sons of Israel the second time. So Joshua made himself flint knives and circumcised the sons of Israel at, at Gibeath Harloth. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. 
all the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all the men of war died in the wilderness along the way after they came out of Egypt. For all the people who came out were circumcised, but all the people who were born in the wilderness along the way, say along the way, church. Okay. As they came out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the sons of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, that is, the men of war who came out of Egypt, perished because they did not listen to the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord had sworn that he would not let them see the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers to give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Their children, say their children. Their children whom he raised up in their place, Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them along the way. Pastor Johnny, would you pray over this message for me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 In verse 15 of chapter 24 of Joshua, you all know this by heart. Most, maybe you can't quote it. I can't quote it, but we know the, the quote of it, where Joshua tells the children of Israel, if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. And then Joshua's words were, but as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. We know that scripture. We've read that scripture time and time again. We've heard that scripture. We've probably heard messages, if not, if not dozens, at least a couple of dozen, sometimes dozens through the years we hear it. There is not a, a, a more important, uh, uh, um, uh, profound, if you could use that word, sign in the Old Testament in the covenant that God made with the Israel in the Old Testament, then circumcision. Circumcision was the covenant. It was the thing that God established was Israel. God called it, the scripture tells us in verse 13, chapter 17, God called it the covenant in your flesh. Verse 13 says, a servant who was born in your house, Actually, it's chapter 17, verse 13. A servant who is born in your house or who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. Thus shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. It was done or it was performed without exception on the eighth day after a male child was born. When a baby Jewish boy, boy was born, on the eighth day, circumcision was done to that child. Verse 14 of chapter 17 says, Any Jewish boy not circumcised would be considered a covenant breaker. Did you hear that? A covenant breaker and cut off from the people of God. How is it, now I want you to think about this. I'm, I'm going to throw some thoughts in your mind. How is it that Joshua, in chapter 5, where it says all the people who were born on the way in the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt had not been circumcised? How is it that the fathers of faith failed that generation? 
So much so that when you read further, it says that generation that came after them did not know the Lord. Something was missing. They didn't know of the stories of how God delivered them. They didn't know of the history. Some of them probably didn't even know of the bondage in Egypt that they were in. For hundreds of years, or dozens of years, if you would, their fathers failed. Their parents failed. In so many ways, the elders failed. Somehow, they missed the mark of, of necessary faith. That's the best thing I could come up with. Necessary Faith is necessary. If you do not instill faith into your children, there is going to be a missing link in that child's life. Somehow they miss that mark of necessary faith or that impartation of faith. They missed it. They missed it. And that following generation did not have it in them. They didn't hear the stories. They didn't hear of the goodness of God. Maybe what they heard was all the complaining of how good it was when they were in Egypt. Of how much better the leeks and the onions tasted in Egypt than manna tasted coming down from the sky. This was the generation that, that witnessed firsthand all the plagues of Egypt that God brought on them. I think ten plagues, frogs and lice and flies and locusts, firsthand they seen and they watched and they experienced the plagues of Egypt. This is the generation that didn't just see the parting of the Red Sea, which would make some of us freak out and pass out. They walked through the dry sand to the other side in the middle of walls of water. And I don't know if we're talking high walls or low walls. It really doesn't matter to me. A wall is a wall, right? This was a generation that watched these incredible things. This, this was the group of people that when they complained that they had no meat, God sent quail. All they had to do was throw up sheets, throw up uh, 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 nets, throw up sabanas, I don't know, you know, anything. Throw their jackets up, throw their clothes up, and they were catching fresh meat. It was like having a cookout where somebody brings Cornish hens. Those things are delicious. This is the generation that watched manna come down at night and went around gathering it in the morning so that they could be fed and, and nurtured. And the manna had enough nutrition in it to sustain them. Man, this is awesome. Think about that. This is the generation that had so many examples, incredible, incredible examples of God's glory and God's faithfulness. And yet they failed somehow. They failed to trust God. And because they failed to trust God, they were doomed to 40 years of wandering in the desert. The problem is that failure didn't just affect them. It affected the children that were growing up. And I would say in their houses, but it was more like in their tents. You know... When children grow up in our homes, they can often go into their room and, and you not see them. There ain't nowhere to hide in a tent. Right? right? Yes, ain't nowhere to hide in a tent. This is a generation that grew up. I mean, closer to their parents than our generation is. They were in one tent together. Junior slept there. Junior slept there. The twins slept in the middle. Mom and dad over here. And uh, how, do they, how do they have babies with all those kids in the tent? Hmm. That's a thought. We'll have to research that Jewish culture right there. This is a gen. Oh my, is right. This is the generation that that had a failure. We know about failures. I said we know about failures. Man, if you understand failure, raise your hand. 
This is the generation that's seen God do awesome things. They, they seen God demonstrate his faithfulness. They, she, they seen God, they watched him show his care and his love towards them. They watched these things happen. But for 40 years, they were doomed to stay in the wilderness because they did not live by faith. They did not impart that faith to the next generation. That's the worst thing of all. Worst of all that issue is that they failed to equip their children for the success they needed in faith. Now, I know there's a little different, big, big different of thousands of years here. But think about how easy that is to try and prepare your children for the world. Because the world is hard and the world is tough and the world is rough and the world can be cruel, but we forget that if we don't, if we don't prepare their hearts with faith, the world is going to eat them up. The world is going to be their focus. The world is going to be their challenge. The world is going to be their strength. They fail to equip their children in the success in faith. The one thing that God told the children of Israel to do. The one thing that God spoke to them while Moses had been taking them through the desert, while Moses had been, these, these folks drank out of water, fresh water that flowed out of rocks. Not a stream coming from, you know, a crack in a mountain. I'm talking just a rock, like, you're going to have some? As soon as I'm through tripping. Right? That would be me. Are you going to drink some water? Aren't you thirsty? I am so thirsty, I'm going to pass out. Well, drink as soon as I'm through tripping. Because that water is not coming from a crevice. It's not coming from a mountainside. It's coming out of a rock. I'm not even sure if I want to drink that water. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure where that water's coming from. God did so many things. Awesome things. And the one thing that God told them, the one thing that God told those parents, that God told their fathers in faith, moms, dads. The one thing he told them to do and to include is to include their children, their sons in the faith. And it was congregationalized or universal, universally ignored. Somehow, Somehow, they forgot. Somehow, the battles and struggles of being disappointed and not liking the desert very well and what happened to the promised land, nobody said what happened to our faith. And with every single male, they neglected to circumcise. They lost the opportunity to share with that generation who God is and what he had done for them and what the covenant agreement was generationally to every generation, starting, starting with them and ending thousands and thousands of years later. Not even ending. God still has a covenant with us. Circumcised right here in our hearts. If you ask people today, they will tell you, it's tough. It's tough. Say it's tough. It's tough. It ain't easy. It isn't all peaches and cream. Not to raise kids in this world. And we look for help in a lot of ways, but sometimes where we make the mistake is not realizing that your faith in Christ is the most powerful thing you have to give to your children. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your faith in God is the most powerful thing your kids can have, our kids can have. There are times that we find ourselves in situations where our life, our life expect expectancies get, they get frustrated. Things don't always go the way we want them to go. Sometimes life gets a little difficult. Sometimes life gets rough. Sometimes life has hiccups. Sometimes life... Sometimes life has like, you know, flat tires on the freeway. You ever see those flat tires on the freeway where it doesn't just go flat, it goes flat, it comes off, and it hits other cars around it. 
You ever seen that? How the big trucks do that? Well, you got to watch that, because that that big tire can ruin a little car. Sometimes life is like that. Sometimes our lives gets a bl- get a blowout, and that blowout hurts people around. We didn't mean it to, but it does. And we forget how we forget how important how important God sees the faith we have in him and the need for us to impart that faith into the generation that grows up in our tents. Ask any parent today. Ask anyone who is a parent today. And they will tell you that they are far from perfect. I am far from perfect. If you don't believe me because you're thinking, ooh, he's El Pastor. That's my grown kids. They'll tell you right off the bat. They know it. They even make fun of some of my imperfections. But one thing that I tried to do, even in the midst of my stupidities and mistakes and weaknesses, is to constantly make sure they realize how important their faith was and the faith in at faith in God and imparting that into every generation are you listening to me so even though we may be par, far far from from per- perfect and even though we may have struggles in life just like the israelites did we have a choice every parent every mom and every dad has a choice We make a choice whether to let these difficulties and problems continue on. You know, if you don't deal with certain things, it just perpetuates and just keeps going and it keeps going. Have you ever heard the snowball effect? Yeah, you take make a little snowball on a hill, put it on the hill and toss it down. By the time it gets down to the bottom of if it's a good sized hill, that snowball's doubled in size. Problems do that in our lives, church. Weaknesses do that in our life. Sometimes we hand our weaknesses to our children. Sometimes we hand our our disgruntledness to our children. Sometimes we hand our criticalness. Sometimes our negativism is passed down to our children, and we wonder why our kids are so negative. You know, you know, I... I raised this sangron. Really? Where do you think that came from? I think my dad. My parents? No, it was my, probably my grandparents. It skipped some DNA and it hit them. No, it didn't. Right. No, it didn't. Right. Every parent has a choice. Amen. We choose. We choose. We choose to deal with the problem. Or let the problem go on and get worse. We choose to repent or not to repent. If we repent, we can do everything or whatever it is that God is asking us to do. And everything that God... And look, let me, let me t- take you back. Go back to Joshua. Go back to Joshua. And I'm going to finish up here real quick. Go back to Joshua. We stopped at verse 7, didn't we? Chapter 5. Look at, look at, read with me a couple of verses here. Now, when they had finished circumcising all the nation, whew, man, that must have took a while. They said, you know what? Our hearts haven't been right. We got caught up. We got distracted. You ever been distracted? Yes. We got caught up. We got distracted. You know, <clears throat> whew, we took a good one a couple months back, uh, a couple years back. Yeah, that was a, that was a bad fall. Yeah, whew. hard time. We got up, but we're up. Yes. We're up. When they finished circumcising the entire nation, ooh, that must have been like, that must have taken weeks, maybe months. There was some painful times in this season right here. It says they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. Then, say then. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach. Today I have rolled away 
the reproach. See that? The reproach was because they hadn't been doing what was right. They hadn't imparted what was right. There was something missing in that generation that, that grew up because their generation had died. And this one didn't know God the way the others did. But there was a failure there. And because they did the right thing, God spoke to them and told Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. He said, it came from the bondage you were in before and you carried it along with you. I've taken it away from you. So the name of that place is called Gilgal to this very day. God took what he couldn't do with them in the midst of the desert because they were in a mess and he finally brought it to that next generation, but they had to get their hearts right. They had to realize that the choices I make are important Amen. and they're valuable. Yes, sir. How did it happen? Well, because we are imperfect people. And we live in an imperfect world. And we live in bodies that are very, very, very imperfect. Let's just say very, very, very unholy. To be holy, you have to think it. You have to decide it. You have to make a choice for it. Your body, your physical flesh, your flesh doesn't want to do godly things. It doesn't want to pray. It doesn't want to read God's word. It, it wants to kick back. It wants to grow Jabba the, the hut laziness. It doesn't want to pursue. It doesn't want to pursue God. Are you listening to me? It doesn't want you. Your flesh doesn't want you to pursue God. Oh, how do you know? Fast. Fast. And you will know how strong your flesh is. Because mine is strong. Yeah. You I don't know about you, but if I get into a fight, I look pretty bad. What did God tell them? God told Joshua, Today, I've taken away the reproach. You did the right thing. You acknowledged that you missed the mark. You know what they did? It gave God the opportunity to, to reach into that generation. It gave God the opportunity to reach into that generation and establish his faith in them once again. Once again, they prioritize and they place God back where he belonged. And you know, time and time again, the children of Israel messed up like that. They messed up like that. They would build altars and they would do crazy things and God would have to get the prophet or he'd have to, get the, he'd have to deal with them and he did it. And he just kept dealing with them because that's what he does. He loves us. He loves us. He never quits. He never gives up. He never pushes us to the side. Come on, somebody. He never tells us, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I'm through with you. You may say that to somebody, but God never says that to us. He is constant. He is consistent. And God always catches us at the time that we need to be caught. I want you to bow your heads right there where you're sitting. I hear the train coming. I was going to sing a Johnny Cash song right now. I'm going to ask a couple of our pastors to come and help me pray. And I'm going to ask them, Pastor Johnny and Sister Kitty, if you guys could come. Pastor Pep, Sister Terry, could you guys come? And I'll let Pastor Johnny start. And I'm going to ask him to pray for us. You don't have to pray long. Just, just a prayer, a prayer of interceding to us and our families, to us for our children. Your, your kids may not be running around in your house because they might be grown. And if they ran around your house, something bad would probably happen to grown kids. But we're still the influence to them. They still watch us. Let's stand to our feet, could you? Let's stand to our feet. Could you stop? Mm -hmm. uh, praise God, church family. Um, you know, this morning, before I, before I pray this morning, um, this morning, um, as I was getting ready to uh, come to church, you know, um, 
my grandson Ethan's w with me. So we get in the shower, and um, he tells me about um, being around some people yesterday, another young man, and he says, and he tells me who it was, and he says, you know, Papa, he was, he was sagging. I was seeing his underwear, and he says, I, I told him, man of, men of God don't sag. Um, my, my daughter, um, Michaela, if I forget to pray with her in the morning or I get busy, and she'll come to me and she'll tell me, Daddy, we haven't prayed yet. Before she goes to sleep at night, when we're, when we're talking, when I'm working, she'll always remind me, pray for, ask me to pray for her. Right now, my granddaughter Alexis is at our home with our three great-grandchildren. And I just spoke to you about three generations that I'm blessed with to be me and my wife. It's an awesome, awesome thing. Um, and I resonate with the words of Joshua for this day. You choose, we choose, I choose whom you'll serve. We choose to serve the Lord. It's a great and awesome thing when you come to that point in your life where you value that God has not only saved us and washed us clean, but he's filled us with his spirit, his yes. love, and his grace, yes. and his mercy, and he allows us to yes. have the privilege to impart it into yes. the lives of our children and the children that God puts around us from our church family and, and within society. Right now, I, I'm so blessed on the position that I have in my job where I'm working with groups of men that are re-entering into society, society and they realize that one of the things that they're so afraid of and so uncertain of is how they're going to reconnect with their families and their children. So I want to pray this morning for us as a family, as a church family, that God will just give us the strength and the encouragement and the wisdom to seek his presence in our lives as we as we have the that great awesome privilege of raising children father this morning we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise and father we're so grateful so thankful for your grace upon grace god that you poured up upon us from the cross of calvary god the love and the mercy god that you have instilled in us lord and father as joshua spoke them words father god as he was connected to you lord god as he imparted them into the people of in the children of israel god as these words god are still in, imparted into us by your spirit this morning god I, I would pray lord that we would have the the courage lord god to to make the decisions in our life to value father god and to impart into the, the generation of children and ch grandchildren, Lord, and, and that you have given us, God. I, I pray right now for wisdom for my brothers and my sisters that hear my voice that are before us today, God, uh, through social media, God, or to stand before you today, God, to seek your face, your presence, God, and, and Lord, to have the, the desire to walk in obedience to your will and to your word. God, we love you and we praise you, Father. And Lord, as I pray daily with my daughter, Lord, we thank you for being a good, good father. Father, to us, Lord, and, and God, I pray, God, that we would have the, 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 the just the, the desire, Lord, to be good, good fathers, good, good parents, God, good, good grandparents, God. Lord, we, we've been given so much, Lord, and, and Lord, I pray that we would just humble ourselves to give it back, Lord, to the next generation. Father, we praise you, we bless you, we glorify you, and we honor you this morning, Lord, in the glorious and the mighty, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Uh, before Pep and Terry come, and uh, we had a lot of single parents. And uh, some of you single parents have done it by yourself for a long time. So I'm going to ask Brother Oscar to come and just be a part of this prayer as he prays for our single parents. And there's a lot that works against you. You think it's tough raising kids and you're, and you're married? It's tough raising kids when you're handling it alone. You need good family around you, good friends around you, good people to help. So I'm going to have him come and, and do that. God is good, amen. Yeah. And I'm saying right there, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Because we love our children, amen. We love our children. And sometimes it's very hard when, when they're not 
the way we want them to be. And we fight and we and and sometimes we provoke more than showing the love of God to our children. Because my kids are grown, amen. And sometimes I don't mind dealing with my grandkids. Because sometimes it's a lot easier, amen. But as our kids get older, they're not always going to make the right decisions. They're going to frustrate us. You want to choke them, then you want to hug them. <laughs> amen? Because that's what I go through. But I love my children and their mind. Whatever situations they go through, whatever, whatever predicament they're in, they're mine. And we need to remember that God loved us just the way we, not were, are. We're never going to be perfect, amen, till we go home. They're going to make bad decisions, amen. We need to stand with them. Like Pastor Johnny was saying, we need to pray with them. We need to pray for them. Amen. We need to teach them that regardless of what they do. Church, where else are they going to run if they cannot run to us? So I want to lift up the singles. Amen. That God's not finished with you. And my pastor told me a while back. Amen. And it spoke values to me because he says, Oscar, you're doing a good job. But sometimes we don't, we don't see it because we're looking at the situation instead of looking at God that's in the situation, even though we don't understand it, even though we don't want to be there. But God is always in control. We just need to repent sometimes, amen. As parents, we need to repent and allow for, for their faults as he done for us. Father God, I come before you, Father God, this evening, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, for your grace, Father God, for your mercy that's been stored upon me, Father God, us, Father God, as your people, Father God. Help us, God. Help us, God, to, to show our children to love our children, Father God, as you done, as, as you loved us despite, in spite of us, Father God. I pray for strength, Father God, for courage in each, in each and every family, Father God, that's represented here, Father God. With us on Facebook, God knows what we need. Help us, Father God, to come in obedience, Father God. Help us to come in repentance, Father God, when it is needed. Because we all know, God, that when we are in it, Father God, we need to come to you in repentance. Help us, Father God, as we continue to go forward, Father God. If we are shaken, God, set us upon solid ground, Father God, once again. That there's, it's never over, God. You allow us do-overs, Father God. Help us, Father God. Never to let go of you, Father God. For you are the reason why we are here, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We give you honor, Father God. We give you glory. We give you praise, Father God, for all that you do, Father God. And I lift up every child, Father God, that, that's every family, Father God, that's represented here amongst us, Father God. Give us direction, Father God. Your direction, Father God. And help us to take heed, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. How many of us have children who are not serving the Lord right now? Amen. In this day and age, I see, I see a lot of parents and grandparents who, who, who their children have come back home and even with their children and it's happened a lot and, it's, and this is happening in our lives but you know God has touched our lives and where we can receive our unsaved children back and still provide for them help them and be there for them and be the example to them and not give up on them never give up on them no matter what they put us through amen but we have to remember that we still through all of that 
need to be the example, need to not compromise to their lifestyles and not accept that in our homes because we serve God. In our homes, we serve God. And that's where we stand, my husband and I. You can live with us, we'll help you, but we will not compromise to your lifestyle. Amen. And we have faith and believe that one day they're going to come back to serve the Lord because we are the examples to them. And, you know, every Sunday before we leave home, I tell my daughters, get up and go to church. And they may not go, and sometimes they do, but I let them know we're going, and you need to get up and go and take your babies to church. Amen. They need to, it's not our job to, to teach our, or to make our grandchildren go to church. It's their, they're the parents. We did our job with our children. They need to do theirs with their children. But we still need to impart that into them. Even as they're adults, take your children to church. Amen. So I have faith knowing that one day they're going to come back to serve the Lord. I don't ever give up on that. But I also stand strong and no compromise to anything. Amen. This morning, I just want to thank Jesus for all that he's done in my life and my husband's and everything that he's provided for us so that we can help them in everything that we can. Amen. Father, this morning we come before you, Lord, and we thank you, God, for your faithfulness in our lives, Lord, to everything that we need and, and everything that we've been through. God, you have been so faithful to us, God. You have been there, Lord, through everything that we've been through. God, I pray this morning, Lord, for our children, Lord, that you will continue to help us, Lord, to be the examples to them, Father. God, that we would have faith, Lord, in knowing that one day, God, they're going to come back to you and they're going to serve you, Lord because, Lord, we have not compromised to anything, Lord, that is not right. I pray this morning, God, for their salvations, Lord. I pray that you would help us to continue our daily life, putting you first in everything, that they may see that in us, God, and that they would want that, that they would want a good life, Lord, that they would want, Lord, salvation in their lives, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, because you are a wonderful God, Lord, and because of you, Lord, we don't need anything because of you, God, we can stand strong, Lord. We can stand every day, Lord, and be overcomers, God. And we thank you, Lord, this morning. And we give you all of the glory in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy and compassion, God. Without you, we're nothing. And apart from you, we can't do anything, Lord. I pray this morning, God, for every person here, every family every home, every marriage, every single person. Father, that you give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, God. That you would fill us, God. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your love. That we could make the right decisions, the right choices. That we could be those godly examples, God. That we could be the light, God. Lord, that you would just work through each and every person, each and every marriage, home, that you would tear down the strongholds of the enemy, God. That would try to bring division. That would try to bring separation in the homes, God. I pray that you would bind us together with love, with unity, God. That you would bring peace and comfort, God. Knowing that all things work together for the good. That you would help us to endure, persevere, God. Father, we praise you. We thank you for all that you're about to do in our lives, through our lives, in our homes, our marriage, in this church, in this city, in this world, God. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them. Teach them. Diligently. To your sons. And you'll talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way. And when you lie down and when you rise up. You will bind them as a sign on your hands. And they shall be as frontlets on your forehead and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that was like god saying put it put faith everywhere and make sure that your life demonstrates that faith because if there's one thing 
this generation that is stepping into adulthood needs, they need greater faith than you and I have had. Things aren't getting easier in this world. They're getting tougher. And faith in people, generations after us, they're going to have to have some strong faith to deal with things that some of us haven't had, never had to deal with. So, Lord, I pray a blessing upon your congregation this morning. I thank you for your words. I thank you for the example as we look back at Joshua speaking to the children of Israel. They had a choice. Those parents had a choice. We have a choice. And as we've heard in our prayers and those pastors that have prayed, we are definitely not perfect and we don't live in perfection, so we call out to you for help. May your Holy Spirit give us strength in our weaknesses and may we hold on to the testimony of all that you've done in our lives. How great our God is. We celebrate that goodness. I speak a ble blessing over each and every family and each and every life. Lord, thank you for the Lord's Day. Blessings to all these that are here and those who watch us live on Facebook. God bless you. Have a great, have a great afternoon. Give the Lord a hand clap. For those of you on Monday night, we will see you Monday night, 6 o'clock for prayer, 7 o'clock for our reading. Have a great afternoon. Be safe. And if you can, brothers, help us get all our chairs and stuff together.